car shredder. Automobiles are complex end-of-life products. A typical car is comprised of some 10,000 parts made from many different materials. Cars at the end of their useful life are then broken down into bits for recycling. To get the job done, recyclers use car shredders. The equipment works just like a conventional paper shredder, but on a much larger scale. Some shredders require the cars to be crushed first, then fed into the machine. Others will swallow a car whole and turn it into pieces in minutes. The shredder blades are made of heavy-duty alloy steel to minimize wear and tear from constant usage and metal-to-metal -metal friction. They're not sharp, but more like a crusher, comprised of a series of interlocking jaws to bite, squeeze, and tear large metals into chips. Another good thing about a car shredder is how the machine gives a large output in similar size with relatively low noise. SLJ 900 The bridge-building behemoth is locally nicknamed the Iron Monster for good reason. It's an all-in-one machine designed to carry, lift, and position sections of track on top of bridge pillars. Manufactured by the Beijing Wow Joint Machinery Company, the Iron Monster is 91 meters long and 9 meters high. It weighs a whopping 580 tons. Its main duty is to lay tracks on new bridges section by section in between the pillars. After laying one section, the Iron Monster rolls backward to collect another section, then glides forward on top of the previously mounted track to install the new one. The SLJ900 has 64 wheels. Each wheel can rotate not only forward and backward, but also sideways. Ponzi Ergo A harvester in the forestry industry and true conqueror of jungle terrain, the Ergo by Ponzi cuts down trees and removes branches to make a nice clean log ready for hauling. It's available in six or eight wheel configurations. Both come with cabin suspension system to help dwindle down any potentially compromising inertia from lateral swings during operation. The eight wheels version is more suitable for difficult job sites with steep slope and demanding terrain. The machine stands between 2.63 and 3.09 meters with 600 millimeters of ground clearance. It weighs 21 and a half tons, powered by a 286 horsepower engine made by Mercedes-Benz and equipped with advanced transmission. The Ergo glides through steep ground like a tank. The telescopic crane is what makes the Ergo an impressive tree harvester. It can be folded away lower than the cabin itself, allowing for better maneuverability on the road. On the job site, the harvesting head can reach up to 11 meters, although the manufacturer offers shorter lengths as well. Train Snowblower Also known as Rotary Snowplow, the monstrous-looking snowblower weighs more than 150 tons and is fitted with an 11-foot fan to cut through the deep and thick snow from railroad tracks. The vehicle was first used on American railroads in the 1880s, originally steam-powered and very slow. Modern snowblower no longer uses steam power. It's not even self-propelled, but coupled with one or more locomotives behind it. Think of the snowblower as a plow, but instead of using any kind of metal shovel attached to the nose, the snowblower, as the name suggests, blows the snow out of the way. You may see the vehicle quite often during extreme winter when snow volumes and thickness are greater and deeper than the height of typical rail snowplow blades. The locomotive behind the snowblower is controlled by an engineer while a separate crew runs the rotary. The snowplow has an extended cab in case the work requires an extended team comprised of an engineer, road foreman, 
conductor, and mechanical support staff to maintain the equipment on the job site. When not in use, the rotary snowplow is stored in operative condition and can be ready to clear any track in a moment's notice. Nautilus Minerals Although the Toronto-based Deep Sea Mining Company is no more, the robots it used for the job were among the most impressive industrial machines ever built. Before the mining operation could begin, an auxiliary cutter equipped with counter-rotating gigantic carbide picks would carve the seabed to create an even surface. Think of it as an excavation and road construction project underwater. Unfriendly terrain like pockets and cliffs must be cleared to ensure smooth mining operation. Next in line is the bulk cutter to turn rocks into mashed gravel for easy collecting. It featured a massive cutting drum to help break down sediment into a more practical size. Thanks to auxiliary cutter, which had flattened the seabed already, bulk cutter could do the job at relative ease. Materials would be channeled to a major pile still on the seafloor for the robot to work on. The third robot, Super Sucker, came next to pump crushed rock and water from the seafloor to production vessel on the surface. It was like an extremely overbuilt vacuum cleaner that could also mix the ore with water. Otherwise, it'd be impossible to pipe the mined minerals to ship up above. Crawler Transporter Made for NASA by the Marion Power Shovel Company in Ohio, the Crawler Transporter was designed to carry the Saturn rocket through just a five-mile journey from the assembly building to the launch pad. Saturn, when fitted with the booster rocket, is even larger than the space shuttle. It cost $14 million in 1967. Crawler Transporter features 16 traction motors and is powered by four generators. Each generates 1,341 horsepower. In addition, the entire machine is propelled by two massive diesel engines that produce a combined 5,500 horsepower. It takes 150 gallons of fuel just to cover a mile. Only a crew of 11 people was directly in control of the crawler transporter, including one driver, six technicians, and four observers. It moves at a blazing two miles per hour, and even worse, one mile per hour when loaded with the rocket. Fractum Breaker Manufactured by Danish company Fractum, the breaker is the largest, most powerful hammer in the world, most commonly used in mining operations. A single stroke can deliver up to 400,000 kilojoules of energy, making it at least 15 times stronger than the biggest hydraulic hammer in the market. The hammer comes as a standalone tube attachment for earth moving equipment, most commonly in excavators but the coupler is compatible with other heavy-duty vehicles as well. The coupling requires no hydraulic hoses, only a traditional lifting cable. In principle, the hammer works like a controlled drop of a ball. The tube is placed right above a boulder, rock, or any object to be smashed. The ball or hammerhead lifts up mechanically and is pulled down to do the hammering. Therefore, it's safe for the operator, precise, and effective. In a mining operation, the Fractum Breaker can break down rocks of 200 tons in mass each without breaking a sweat. The harder the rock is, the more efficient the breaker tends to be. Bagger 293 Manufactured by German-based industrial company Tackraft, the scary-looking excavator is called the Bagger 293. Unlike a typical digger, however, the Bagger is a gigantic bucket wheel machine capable of mining 220,000 tons of brown coal per day. It looks like the kind of heavy-duty equipment that the Terminator would use. It stands 94 meters high and weighs 15.6 tons. Bagger 293 is currently the heaviest and largest earth-moving equipment in the world. Despite the intimidating look, the operation is actually pretty simple. Strapped to the front of it are 18 massive buckets put together like a post-apocalyptic Ferris wheel. 
As the wheel rotates, each bucket scoops up 1,452 gallons of earth and dumps it onto a conveyor belt, which in many cases runs many miles long to the collection site. For the Bagger 293, a day of operation means moving 8.48 million cubic feet of soil, coal, or anything else that lies ahead of it, equal to about 96 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The price tag is $100 million.